Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. So excited to be here, see you guys. It's been a while. The yeah. last time we saw each other, we were hanging from trees at the Metro West Y. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, well, what an experience. She was doing most of the hanging. I tell you. She was the bravest of the three. Exactly. So if you, you know, if you didn't hear about this, the Be Strong and Adventurous event that we hosted at the Metro West Y, we all experienced being on a ropes course. And some of these amazing contraptions, I call them, in the trees that was so, you know, fun and scary and... Uh, it was scary. They started limits. <laughs> Team leader on that score. I tell you, <laughs> wasn't that fun? I, I really enjoyed the experience. I have to say that a couple of ones I didn't know what I was getting myself into until I was up there. Now, at all times, you're safe. And so I was on belay. But belay, knowing the lingo, that was the other thing too. <laughs> yeah, so attached to a know. rope, yep, yep. and you weren't going to fall, and you were, you know, and and you were tethered so that you know everything was was all secure. We're going to show some pictures because it was high. I mean, I thought ropes courses. I don't know what I was thinking. They were sort of on the ground, and they do have some of those. And Darlene and I, we tried yeah, a little bit. We, we tried the you know the eighteen inch high one. <laughs> but the, you guys were repelling it way was 50, up there, 60 feet off the ground. Oh, it God. was just way up there. And, and a couple of times, I don't have a fear of heights, but when you start to look down, it's like, oh, that's really far. Yeah, well, so. I have and a, and yeah. it was a lot of strength, but it was a lot of mental. Oh. There was a lot of well, mental. The, there were some that were like almost like a jungle gym you had to go through. And the cargo netting one yeah. was where, you, and, and that one you had to figure out right. because your inclination was to go small, but it was easier when you reached really far so and kept this yourself spread out. Rope netting across the, between two trees, pretty widespread. Cli you know, I think it was about 40, that one was about 40 feet high. Yeah, yeah 40 feet, think. climbing up to the top and then, you know, kind of moving across, looking at people that must have looked like ants down below. I, you know, because I have a height, <laughs> a height issue. But you, know. but you guys, and then there was that one that where you swung with like almost like a you had to be able to grab like a Tarzan rope and keep going. Yeah, that was the hard one. That yes. was, and it was up higher, mm -hmm. and it was definitely you weren't swinging, but you were essentially type roping across the Grand Canyon is what it felt <laughs> like. And you're and the only thing that secured you, in addition to being roped in, yeah, right. <laughs> was that. Um, you would grab a dangling rope and then you would go, 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 and then grab another dangling rope and you kept working your way across. And it, it was, was just. Wild. Well, that was the one you did first. Yes. Yeah. Little did I know. I, mean, I think the neat thing with it, too, is it was a, you know, everyone had a good time and it was a different group of women that we've had. Yeah. About so 15 of us. Yeah, 15 see, women that showed up for this. this and, was you know, a bunch awesome. of us went out afterwards for beers and stuff at TJ's, but that, you know, over the next few days, people were like, can we do this again? Can we do this again? And, and other people wanting to do it again. Yeah. Well, yeah. so, you know. And the Y was very generous uh, to give us, like, mm. the space all to ourselves and the staff and, and all the, the equipment. And, and Scott, the his role at Metro director. West, director. Of He's the executive director of this site. Oh, yes. And he was masterful in terms of just his patience and support and the other staff folks who were out there. And they clearly, I mean, who knew? And my kids used to go to the Y after school. But this is all back there. I mean, adults can take advantage of this. It's awesome. So I'm bragging to my kids and my son, <laughs> Mom, don't you know, I was doing that when I was in middle school. <laughs> and I was like, I poop I was like, yeah, but it was a big deal for me. But yeah, that, was that is a big it. deal. Yeah. The point of it was it took us out of our comfort zone. We did things we had never done before, but we had both camaraderie and support. Mm -hmm and it was always safe. Yes. And so it allowed us to step a little further. So now I think you guys want to go back I and, do. I and try, it again. try different things. And, and I know I want to go back. And, and, and there are different things we didn't even get to. Oh, things yeah. like right. the zip lining and right. this archery that we were going to do. So right. we, there are all different things that we can do that are kind of 
Yeah. Out, out, of, what, out of what is the typical girls' night out. Yeah. Totally. This was there was out. there was, was no yeah. wine or cheese or <laughs> right. and, no wine. And, and, and there was no there knock was off. whining, but there was <laughs> whining. Oh, yeah. You know, there was not a pile of knockoff bags anyway. Right. No shopping. No no wine. No cheese. No. no oh yeah. You were seeing us in our finest. We had helmets on. You had to wear yeah. helmets. We, we got were harnessed. Sweaty, we got a little dirty. It was fun. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. We, you know, it, it brought out 12 people. Did, I didn't know them all very well uh, at all, and um, it was great. Just you know, we really got to to see you know different skills and and, and four uh, of them were Girl yeah. Scout leaders, which was kind of cool. Oh, and, and they, they, were, they were the naturals too. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and and it was fun to share that as a common experience. Yeah. It certainly bonded us all. Absolutely. Um, but it was just you know, I I, I mean. You guys, so I don't have a fear of heights, and but it was definitely pushing for me. But I found out, and I didn't know this because we were all rah 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 about this. <laughs> and then I get there, and I'm going, "Oh my God, you guys are really pushing yourselves." Because yeah. heights, yet both of you scaled up a right. tree yeah, really yeah, high yeah. and then belayed and down. Belayed down. Got, yeah, I'm, a, yeah. The other thing is, I'm just not that strong too, and it takes a lot of strength to pull yourself up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and but so, but mean, you did it. And how did you feel about that? How did you feel about doing something? It was good. I mean, I was very, I was fine starting, but when I got up there, it's like, nope, I'm not going down the rope. I was, I, I'd hit like a plateau. Yep. Well, I got, I um, was all excited to do it until the reality that was there. And I looked up and saw you shimmied up there immediately. I was like, okay. And then seeing you like a pinprick up there in those trees. <laughs> Sorry. That, that made me nervous. And I said, okay, I'm thrilled enough watching. So I, I was a little bit of a slow uh, adapter. But then I, it was so much fun. It looked like rappelling down. Or that was, was it fun? It was fun. I love that part. So I would, I would push a little bit more to try mm. to do that one the cable, were, the, the, the cable bridge. The cable bridge, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that I don't, you know, that other whatever they call little, it. Yeah, that was, yeah. I think it was fun, just for the for the, uh, you know, reward of propelling down. That was that's fun part. That's yeah, the fun yeah. part. And, and you know, no judging. That's the other thing that I really appreciated about the the group and the experience. I mean, there was nobody being teased, obviously, at all about whether they whatever comfort level they had. But did you, you know, feel any pressure? Did you feel the group was pressuring you to do anything? Not I at felt all. encouraged. Yeah, not no, pressure. The, the group was awesome. The group was awesome. Yeah, the group was awesome, and it was you know, if people that you know, I, I that you know, I, the Girl Scout leaders and stuff. I would think, yeah, they would be more. Someone like Kathy. Um, Buckley. Buckley, I didn't expect oh, right. her to be as. I was like, whoa! I know she was brave. Because, she was and I know she teaches Zumba and stuff like that yeah. too. But I've always pictured her. I've always seen her in a suit, either out to dinner, hockey, yeah, all done you know, you know, and beautiful, and Miss Real Estate. And I'm like, love wow. you, Kathleen, <laughs> <laughs> rock star. <laughs> but, but, but it was. It took us all out of our elements, put us in a different place, and had us. Doing things that we don't normally do. Yeah. So what do we think? We're thinking about doing it again in the fall. Or in the, the fall, Scott. After the camps are over, mm -hmm. and maybe when school's back in, and doing it, um, maybe on an evening. Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe possibly a, yeah, a Saturday. Maybe Saturday will always be hard with soccer. Yeah. Well, you're gonna. Like that, it, yeah. We're never gonna be able to get For everybody. everybody. We, but we maybe never do everybody. But there's too many of us. <laughs> but maybe we can do Saturday late afternoon. Right. Soccer's yeah, done by that then. might be fun. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, there was a lot of demand for it and a lot of interest, and so um, we'll definitely do that again. We're going to do it again. But when we were there, um, and we didn't go in, we got so excited about things, we really didn't go into it. But you were talking about the brave mantra. Right, 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 right. And we talked a little bit about this on our last show, but I'd mm -hmm. love for you to refresh, because I've been trying to think about that. Good. And, yeah. and, you know, I don't yet have it as a mantra. I think it changes day to day. <laughs> but I'm definitely thinking about it as a power statement. Right. Every morning right. I try to think about, okay, you got it. You know, seize the day. Carpe diem. Carpe diem, exactly. Well, the whole point is to, you know, uh, talk yourself up. I mean, I think we all do that to some extent. But to be very intentional and think of a sentence, a statement, that you, that gives you a sense of power, it should make you have a little bit of butterflies, too. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, go girl. I mean, that's kind of, you know, but something that really says, you know, I am powerful. I'm courageous. I'm brilliant. I mean, now that makes my stomach flutter but yet there's truth in those nuggets with all of us we tend to be self-deprecating yep. and I'm generalizing most women 
we tend to want others to compliment us. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have a nice outfit. Oh, this whole thing. You know, we put yeah, ourselves right, down. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You know, and so to suddenly tell yourself, almost, yeah. you know, it's like putting on a narcissistic persona. Yeah. And it's Which very totally uncomfortable. Make, it makes me yeah, yeah, I know. I was like, no, we don't do that. <laughs> um, you know, your mother never saw, you know, yeah. your mother, no, you don't do that, no. Um, and, and so, that's, that's why we have to interesting. You almost have to exaggerate it, and it's a, it should be an aspirational mantra. So when you say that to yourself, it's amazing because I've been practicing it for a while. And you, if you say that to yourself quietly, as you prepare to have a courageous conversation or a difficult conversation with someone, as you prepare to step up in some way that you're not 100 percent comfortable, I guarantee you, if you practice saying that at different intervals, not just that line, you come up with your own. That is an aspirational statement. They give, they gird your loins, so to speak, literally. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, have you thought about this at all, or you know, a little bit? I think you know. I know you've been so busy with work, <laughs> you know. But I, I think the more you guys have been talking about, I've been thinking about an event we're doing next week, and it's a salute to strong women. So, we've invited lots of um, young girls to come for free and just sit around, and then we have other people coming it in. It's a neat event, but it's. Um, people listening to the stories that inspired some people that you guys will never hear of but a woman named Avis Murray who is a pretty prominent tennis pro in the North Shore she's a Hall of Famer um, mm -hmm. who's been in through the military she's now in her 70s and her story story of Kim Driscoll who is the mayor of Salem and the first mm -hmm. city's ever mayor uh, Ruggiero who is the ice hockey Olympian yeah. uh, Nancy Kerrigan who yeah. everybody knows oh, who right. she is um, a woman named Kelly Schetzel, who is, I would say, in her early to mid 30s, mm -hmm. and is the publisher of North Shore Magazine, wow. and mm -hmm. the youngest like magazine publisher in New England. Wow! And then um, a woman named Billie Jean King. And all kind of sharing what inspired them, yeah. what is their motivate, you know, and you know s some of the things that were like their hardest struggles. Yeah. And you know, hearing like, okay. Um, I know Billy has a book, book called Pressure is a Privilege because of the things that make you think you're struggling through sometimes actually make you stronger, or give you better skills Absolutely. and things like that. And so I, when you were talking about it, I was thinking about that event next week because we're actually trying to put together some of the scripts and um, the questions and things like that for the girls to hear. Oh. Um, we have um, Susan Tapp from uh, Magic 106 mm. will be emceeing it and doing the questions wow. and stuff. And it, it's a neat event. It'll be next Wednesday, which awesome. is the 22nd. So you Excellent. brought up a, a point, um, kind of backdoor with questions to ask them. And that's often been something that in the whole Being Brave series is um, figuring out how to ask yourself the right questions mm -hmm. um, so that you can move forward. And asking the right questions, I was having a conversation with, actually with my sister-in-law, and she had told me, she's, um, hi Susan, not that you're ever gonna see this show, but um, <laughs> I'm sharing this story. She had told me her one disappointment, she's um, an ESL and trained as a, a grade school teacher, and she would apply, but never got her own classroom. And she said, that's my one disappointment. I said, well, let's talk about why did you want your own classroom? And as we explored with questions, she realized the goal wasn't to have her own classroom. Mm -hmm. The goal was the impact and what she could do. And so when we talked about that, she changed her goal. Because yes. the goal, because what her goal was, was more of a tactical, here's what it here looks in like. In the box type of thinking, yeah. And as we went through the questions, she mm -hmm. went, oh wow. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And suddenly, when we framed her goal mm -hmm. in the shape of an impact mm -hmm. and, and having an effect, yes. oh. it allowed her to be free to look at things differently. Absolutely. And when I think of being brave, part of it is we sometimes get stuck in our rut and we say we can only do this and we need to free ourselves with, exactly. can we do it differently? How can we do it differently? And asking right. the right questions. Well, I think when you yes. said that is yes. the asking part. <laughs> um, Melissa um, is doing a partial week at Camp Bailout, which is a run by the women firefighters in Ashland. Mm. And so she was there yesterday. Well, men, they have more than one? 
yes. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. I, sorry, but you know, Hop it's, Hop it's, has won, but right, and, and, has won. and Sarah Ann is actually part of this group uh, for Camp Bailout. And we had Sarah on the show. Of, yeah, of, yeah. Of but the um, it is a lot of life skill things they're learning, whether it's first aid, you know, emergency situations. But yesterday was they were climbing up a building and belaying off of it and jumping out of different parts. And you know, she came home from camp telling her whatever was going on and stuff about boys she was texting and stuff like that. <laughs> and um, she goes, oh, I didn't um, go all the way up to the top. I didn't do the high one. And I said, oh, were you scared? And she goes, no, no, I was just talking to someone and forgot to ask. She goes, it was my own fault. I didn't ask, and so they, were, they didn't think I wanted to do it. And so mm -hmm. she, knowing, you know, at 14, if I wanted to make sure I wanted to do it, I had to ask. Right, And, right. you know, speak up and be the one to say to do something. Exactly. Well, and exactly. that's, that's the, <laughs> the other p part of being brave is finding your voice. It's not only asking questions, but raising your hand and saying, I want this. Mm -hmm. You know, to your point of being thinking outside your yeah. box, I was having a similar conversation with someone the other day in terms of this is a person who, you know, is uh, about our age and really wants to change careers. It's just tired of what she's doing and, and, and so forth. And really, uh, you know, too often we think about the limits. I can't do this. I've studied this. Yes. I've been in this track. I, you know, whatever. We say, we say what we can we, do, we are, not what yeah, we can do. Exactly. And, and so getting her to think beyond that. And also we think about what it is we want in terms of these creature comforts. Mm -hmm. I want flexibility. I want this. I want that. Fine. That's the icing on the cake. But to your point, focus on what do you want to contribute to the world? What if, you know, you could do anything? What do you, what would you like to do? What value? What impact? That's just the visioning exercise. It is. Exactly. You know. And when you list things like that, then you can back into, well, then what kind of... What are my goals? What are my what what goals? Wanted? Or what sort of way can you shape that into a way to, to work and live? So, so I, I slice it into visioning where mm -hmm. the world is, there's no I can't. It's all the things you can do. And we can take away gravity, mm -hmm. and you can walk on rainbows and sit on clouds. And so, <laughs> so, but, but the right. point is, we have a value system from our parents, our friends, our spouses, our children, you know, the world. And so that value system often is very healthy, but it, it also causes us to put ourselves here. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the visioning is to take, get rid of that. And then from that, once you free yourself of that, then you can go to the goal setting. That's right. And but you've got to start with the, with the imagination. And, yeah. and then after you have the goal setting, then it's the roadmap. How do I achieve that? Exactly. What are, and what are the paths I can take? You can take the Mass Pike into Boston. You can take Route 20. You can take Route 9. You can take a bunch of side roads. <laughs> and you can all end up there at the same place. Different paths, different ways, yep. different scenes, different experiences. Well, one of my favorite quotes is Gloria Steinem saying something about um, imagination is the first step in planning. The first step is to you know think about something. Think of Walt Disney. Think of, and oh my about God! Yeah, totally, so. totally. That's and, and not everybody, but a lot of those really impactful people. Yeah. Have the I mean, ability. they thought he was nuts when he was buying swamp land in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Helicopters flying to it. He's like, no, there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Amazing. I Amazing. Know. So very cool. Uh, so have uh, anybody been to the? Just switching gears a tiny bit. I just had yeah. a spring thought. Anybody been to the concerts? Uh, you know, like I'm just fun, what's going to, going on in town fun wise? I know that the uh, the Metro West Symphony is playing this Sunday. Oh, oh and that, and that is and amazing. The, yeah. And that's Bruce Carlin as yeah. part of that. In oh, town. A lot nice. of Hopkintonians there. So oh, check it out. Sheila in that too? I think so. Yeah, Sheila Zarbra Campbell. Yeah, yeah. And her, and her oh, son nice. Christopher um, okay. play French horn in it. Um, it. It's a great symphony, and they oh, they've God. done concerts like, you know. Not in the summer, out in the common too. They've right. done them at the middle school yeah. and things like that. And it's really but this good. will be on the commons. It's, it's on the common Sunday, Sunday evening. Oh, oh lovely! Oh, what a great That's event! I know. Last night they had a movie. Oh wow! Um, they did Wreck It Ralph. Oh, at the, and oh. Stuff. beautiful I, night for being out there. Yeah, I was working, but wow. Yeah, me too. And um, you know, one event that's coming up at um, next Thursday. Um, Okay. It's project just because um, Christmas in July. Yeah, their annual, and it's their biggest funding wage. Christmas in July. There's still go to projectjustbecause.org um, 
or call and ask for Karen and tickets are still available. It is their biggest fundraisers. They've got tons of raffles it's and silent fun. auctions. I've oh, gone great. in years past yeah, no. and it's just amazing. I, I know I'm away for work and won't be there this year, but if you guys, they, it's less than a week away and in six days, if you guys can make it, that'd be great. Oh, sounds yeah. great. Sounds that's, great. That's awesome. We had a nice little time at the Pink Night the other week. Oh, uh, yeah. The library oh, yeah. fundraiser. Yeah, that, was fun. that was a huge turnout. That, the library, I think that was really successful. Um, uh, the know. risk of TMI, I tell you what a key takeaway from a fun tip around that was the discovery of that liqueur, St. Germain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was like the theme. And uh, it's been a fun little uh, summer vacation cocktail. Uh, yeah, so I, I guess delicious. that was at the vineyard. Yes. Oh, God. I know. I know. It's just that. Uh, well, we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk, talk about more about summer next plans. Time. Yeah, yeah, next time. But, but it was the, the pink and, and the library fundraiser and... Um, you know, I know summertime tends to be a little quieter on the fundraising front, but there's a lot of events going on in town. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know. And I was trying to pull up a document, um, but I'll send it over to be put up on the show. Um, I got an email from the library the other day, and it was um, listing all the current passes they have and everything else, but we're talking about the programs oh, the library. Oh, right. summertime, yeah. go to the library. You can get then, so many free passes to right. so many things. Lots of libraries, exactly. things like that. And then um, it is Friday, and if um, if you go to the Highland Foundation's website, um, it's um, free Fridays, and it lists all these different things. So like each Friday it changes. So today I know is like the Lars Anderson Museum, and which is one we're actually members of. Mm -hmm. in, um, and isn't the Worcester Art Museum usually free on Fridays Saturday. or Saturdays? Saturday. First Saturday, Saturday, of, the first first Saturday, Saturday of the month. It's first Saturday of the month. But this is the Highland Foundation funds um, for every, it's, um, mostly Boston to the greater Boston, out to the Metro West, mm -hmm. that every Friday there's a series of, um, you just show up, it's free, it, it, you don't need a pass, nothing. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you go to the Highland Foundation, they list every um, Friday, cool. there's a list of great places to go to. That's great, I forget yeah. about that, yeah. I've used it, the, I've used it before, the, the um, yeah, it makes you explore different. In fact, I went to uh, the Isabella Gardner one time, oh. I think it was a library pass. And I yeah. fell in love with that museum. I want to go back. I mean, I'll be yeah. honest, even when we're on vacation, I'll go to the lot, their local Lib library, to see, see what, what, they have. what yes. passes they have. So we've done, you know, the Portland Children's Museum, the Portland Museum of Art, and all I've done is go to the Wells Library. You get a library card for free, and you don't have to be a resident. Right. And I go in and I take the passes. We go up for free, come back, and mm -hmm. we well, it. And it's a great and resource. I think it's one of the best places wherever town you're in to go to the library and ask them what's going on. They're going to know what's going on in town. Absolutely. They're going to have suggestions that are off the beaten trail, and you'll get an experience that isn't just like everybody else's. Absolutely. And when you're on vacation, like when people are going on vacations and things like that, you know, it is a really good resource. It's also become a, when my kids were real little, and you have those rainy beach oh, days. Oh, it's oh great! It, yeah, it was one of those things where they had like you know, two or three mornings a week they had children's story time things. Like, yeah. Let's go to the They've library and sit there and yeah. stuff. Um, and there's local farmers markets. You know, already opened up here in town. Oh, so on Sunday, our farmers ours. market yeah. is open. But they're everywhere. So even if you're on vacation, there's they're everywhere. And well, absolutely. I will tell you, and one of our field trips has to be if you are a foodie. Oh. Sundays in so South Boston. Yeah, oh, yeah, South yeah, yeah. Boston. We, we keep yeah. saying that. Food yeah. 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 trucks. They yeah. are amazing. Now, on a good weather day, it's a mob scene. Right. But just be patient because there's so much food. You pick one thing, I like you start chewing on it, and then you get in line for the next <laughs> thing, and you don't mind. And then around the corner, they have a farmer's market there, and then they have they an have art, the art gallery. gallery yeah. Which is yeah. great. The so art I've done neat, that. It's fun. It's a neat outing, and it's, and it's very... Um, it's family friendly. Right. Very right. family friendly. Right. Yeah. Well, but I definitely am in the event cooking up mode because there's so many fun things to do around New England. We should come up with something yet this summer. We'll think yeah. you know, we'll do the Metro West thing in the fall. Well, an RHH um, member had a grill uh, instructional event. Oh, yeah, it was for oh, fee. Right, right, right. But it's uh -huh. her business, but mm -hmm. she showed. She did it for her father. It was a as Father Day's Day, so it was a men's grill night. Sabine did it. Yeah. Um, oh, she's right. a, she lives mm -hmm. she lives um, down by Sandy Beach, mm -hmm. and it was sold out. And um, they they um, they had like a big dinner. They got to cook it, recipes, and she did like little goodies for them yeah. and everything else. She's a she personal said, chef, or she has a, she's a private business? chef. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh but well, on top of that, yes. what? top chef, top chef, grill master. Congratulations, Chris Hart. He's oh, awesome. Right. And actually, if you were at Pink Night, Chris Hart was there. 
Where was oh. he? He was sampling barbecue stuff. Off that was him. That was With him. I didn't know. Providing. Was he well, a he vendor? Was, yeah. yeah, he was a vendor there. He what was did there. he serve? Oh, I, don't I know. I remember Which one? now. And he would he do had the little um, and he little would, cups of stuff. And he would come and he yes. talked about how he'll do stuff. And he yeah. won yeah. chopped. You wow. want grill you want, master? You want chopped grill masters for Greater Boston or something like that? Or where was it? Was it the entire country? Was it the entire oh. country? Yeah. Oh my he's, God! He's, was it just yeah. shown this week or something? Yeah, it was this week. Um, I be, and don't I voted, quote I me, but um, I believe he was also fan favorite, which I think it was either an extra ten or I think his grand prize was like fifty thousand dollars for this thing. Wow! Hey, I'll get to it on the map I, again. On a really positive about Chris is that he's a very very kind guy, and when he's known of families who've had severe illnesses going on and things like that he has prepped tremendous amounts of food for these families no. and dropped them off meals and you oh. know and different than just drop you know it yeah. was some you know something done by a gourmet chef all grilled up and you know we all drop off you know our casserole lasagna, lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. uh, he's gone above and beyond sometimes on what he does for a living wow giving to these families which has been great so that's awesome that's that exciting. is cool i didn't know i just Knew he had won. I didn't realize it was the, the, the big one. One. Big that is amazing. Awesome. So. so well, very good. Very good. Good catching up a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, oh, thank you so much for your idea around Brave and, and adventure for that event. You know what? And, and it was such a great success. Yeah. I, I, to <laughs> me, it's me drinking my own Kool-Aid. Yeah. But and I hope we and keep pushing doing more us of it. To do it. My well, goodness. Well, anyway, yeah. thanks right. everybody for being Have with us. Have a good us. weekend. Nice to see you. See you again soon. Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Thompson. Diabetes is one of the country's most prevalent chronic conditions, affecting nearly 29 million Americans. The disease is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States and can lead to other serious conditions such as heart disease, blindness, kidney disease, and amputations. Another 86 million people, more than one in three Americans, are living with prediabetes, and nearly 90% of those are unaware of it. A person with prediabetes has a blood sugar level higher than normal but not high enough for a diagnosis of diabetes. And without lifestyle changes to improve their health, such as maintaining a healthy weight and getting regular exercise, many patients with prediabetes will develop type 2 diabetes within five years. Check with your doctor to get screened and tested, and act today. For more information, visit the American Medical Association at preventdiabetesstat.org. Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout troop, and two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout troop tour and for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Speaking of cookies, our favorites are Thanks a lot, Caramel Delight, Thin Mint. Thinmints. Thinmints. Thanks a lot. Thank you! <laughs> Here we go. And action. We also, give it, we also want to give a shout out. Go. This is going to be the one. We are, are the girls from Girl Scout Troops. Hi, we are the girls. We're trained okay, professionals. Here we go, ready? Faces here. Smiles. Right, here. How do you feel about that? That was awful. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> that was yeah. Awful. Cut. Ooh, that's we did it. We did it. We did it.